We're going to have some interesting conversations this morning. I want to introduce my guest to you. I have in studio Gabriela Tete, who is a National Communication Team member of the NDC. Gabriela, good morning. Hey, good morning. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Yeah, I'm well. How, how is the goings on? Well, it's cool. Yeah. Uh, mm, everything can't complain. cool. Really? Yeah. You can't complain. Who will complain to? <laughs> if you complain, you're that cute of West No, Council, I guess you can complain. It's just that there's no one to complain to. No one will listen. They'll tell you you're either suffering from witchcraft or you have jaundiced um, eyesight. Really? So we'll, we'll take it like that. And then we'll wait for December 2020 and then we'll see. Then we'll see. Whether we see or we don't see. I hear you. <laughs> well, talking about 2020, this, the first conversation will be about elections. So we're going to um, look at that. 2020 elections coming up. Um, we have um, MPP NDC fight over the the forty two the forty two uh, percent undecided voters. Uh, I'll read a quick story for you there, and then uh, also the subject of um, the, the the parties walking out over on the EC uh, over the biometric uh, register. Uh, let me do that one first. The, the walking out on the on the on the EC. Okay, so four, NDC, four other parties walk out of the EC meeting over the biometric, uh, new biometric register. So the story goes, uh, this is on citynewsroom.com. Uh, the National Democratic Congress and the People's um, National Congress, PNC, uh, together with three other political parties, have walked out of a meeting with the Electoral Commission. The uh, United Front Party, the Eagle Party, and the All People's Congress were, all, were also part of the walkout. Um, according to the NDC, the EC deceived them into the meeting only for them to realize that they were there to witness the demonstration of software uh, for a new biometric register, which they are opposed to. The director of elections of the NDC, Elvis Free Ankara, claimed that the parties had not discussed the issue exhaustively enough and had made co their concerns known in previous IPAC meetings. Several sessions were held and public fora were even done. So why is it that they wanted to introduce this as if by the back door? He claimed an invitation for the emergency meeting on November 25th uh, where the issue of the new register came up, though it was not on the meeting agenda. Um, again, and I quote, we found it irregular because you don't put those proposals in an emergency meeting and take note that in the notice that was sent, we were not going to discuss new biometric register. Again, for the second time, they tried to hide under the cover of the EC's program. Uh, the parties were asked to bring experts to discuss the procurement um, of the new register at another emergency meeting on December 2nd. All right, let me, let me come straight to you, um, Gabriela. So what, were, what did you know you were going to that meeting for that you seemed surprised that the biometric register had come up? Well, you know, good morning to your viewers. You know, going into an election, mm. in um, an election year, definitely you're going to have to discuss the whole program for the rollout. Okay of the election day activities. Mm. Now, on the agenda for calling this meeting, yes. according to the NDC reps who were present, mm. the issue of the biometric register was not on the agenda. Okay. So we had to discuss other uh, programs for the rollout, when this campaign is starting, your organizations, the new constituencies coming up, blah, blah, blah. Mm. But you know, I think that we're all in this whole democratic thing because we want multi-party democracy yeah. for this country. Yeah. And we want it to work for Ghana. Mm. So if that is what we've all agreed upon, the onus is on the referees in the game. Yes, that's the EC. The EC. Mm -hmm. To make sure that going forward, you have everybody online mm. with whatever agenda that you want to set. Mm. That's one of the important reasons why you have IPAC mm. in the first place, yeah. to engage your political parties yeah. on the platform. Mm. Now, if you come up with surprises at uh, meetings like this... Why were you surprised, though? 
You know, the issue of biometric registration has been on the table, or concept of it, has yeah. been on the table for a long time. Okay. Now, if we're going to adopt a biometric registration before a major election, mm. clearly, we should come to a common understanding of yeah. what the software is, um, security implications of the software, mm -hmm. Costing has to be known to us, for okay. all parties. Okay. Um, whether there um, can be, uh, what they call it, it's possible for the system to be hacked and all those things. You want to know It also comes the security. Yeah. But all those things also have to come to the fore, to mm. be discussed. And everybody accepts. If there are issues that this party, could be any party, yeah. has with the system, that's yeah. when you bring it out. Okay. So you need time to have okay. this discussion I and to roll mean. out... Uh, so any software mm. going into an election. You don't mm. wait a year to an election and then you come and say, we're going to introduce biometric registration. And what if the system fails us on that day? Mm. But know? isn't a year enough time? At least. If we had done had this conversation, let's say, in um, 2018, 2017, okay. 2018, okay. we would have had a test run, okay. probably with this um, upcoming election. Yeah. Because this is a very major election. Mm. Mm. Assembly people... Mm. You know, so you can test the system and see what are the challenges with it. Can it be breached? All those things. Mm. But if you sit down till December mm -hmm. 2019, when you are going for an election, December yeah. 2020, without a test run, mm. without us understanding how much it's going to cost the country mm -hmm. to roll it out, is this, a, is, this, is this really a very important <laughs> element in the election mm. that we can't do without? Okay, I mean, fair, fair, fair question, fair question. But um, uh, your fears are that something is go something is going to happen that will possibly, and it may mess up the system because if we've not tested it. We're is not, that the issue? We, we, we don't have a fear, but you see, if you've observed, mm. um, with the introduction of technology mm. into the electoral processes, mm. there are a lot of countries that have complained about electoral malpractices, interferences. Okay. You know what's happening in the U.S. with yeah. President Trump, yeah. with the uh, Russians yeah. already. Yeah. You had um, mm -hmm. reports from Bolivia. There were so many, even in Kenya, during the 2016 elections, where they also discovered that their systems were, people tried to get into their yeah, system and hack their system yeah. and try and manipulate mm -hmm. results. So if you want us to deploy anything, yeah. Whatever be the case, it has to be, there definitely has to be a test run, mm. and we have to test it and see whether it, all these things are possible yeah. or not. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, we want free and fair mm. elections. Okay, so let's, let's, let's really quickly go and read the story on, um, on the Afrobarometer reports, because mm. that's, another, that's another thorny one. All right, so I'll first read what um, Babenga Samoa said. Um, he says, Afrobarometer report, undecided voters will soon back the NPP. And he says, <laughs> um, the NPP, uh, okay, so speaking on Eyewitness News, on Monday, uh, Yabwa Beng Asamoah said, the citizens are undecisive because their expectations have not yet been met. Since the government is still cleaning up the supposed mess it inherited, from the Mahama administration. With regards to the portions of the report which said 12% of Ghanaians are unsure which party to vote for in the upcoming polls, Babena Samoa said the trend will soon change. Then I quote, you have to take that survey overall and look at the inbuilt frustration of the system that we have. Where you have a government come in and literally drag us all the way back. And when another government comes in, the expectation of the people is that they are, we that we have been dragged back for that um, that far. Uh, they will be rebounded quickly. But the problems the Mahama administration left us are such that they, as a, that is Ghanaians, in, inevitably feel uh, this thing that the expectations haven't been fully met. Um, so they are waiting. So the people who are waiting are people who will go, uh, who will go going forward will definitely decide because 34 uh, percent voting for the MPP and 22 percent for the NDC. I think it's a healthy gap already because as more people begin to realize that the expectations are uh, coming gradually on stream, 
these numbers for the MPP will build up. Your comments. <laughs> I like the look on your face. <laughs> I mean, that's what that's my MP. Uh, um, <laughs> you know, in 2016, yeah. I think that Ghanaians gave the NPP a resounding victory to silence the NDC. Mm. And it was for a reason. Mm -hmm. Because coming from the period 2013, 2016, we came under a lot of stress yeah. as a country economically. And it had a toll on people. If we said that it didn't happen, we would brush it under the carpet, we'd be lying to ourselves. Mm. We had issues with the load shedding. We had issues with the currency losing value, which affected cost of living for people. We had issues where young people did not feel that we've um, addressed their challenges well enough. So for a 53% massive voter turnout mm. for you mm. was a big endorsement that here is it. Yeah. Please deliver Do us. Do something. Now, 2019, you have an Afrobarometer, mm -hmm. which has now reduced your voter well, whatever yeah. gains to less than 12%. Mm. And then you are sitting there saying that who, who will turn back for you in 2019? No, but you don't... No, don't you understand his argument? His argument is very simple. And it seems to make sense to me, right? In the sense that Ghanaians have a lot of Let me fill the blanks for you. I know okay, what you want to tell me. Blanks. Because they've had this financial cleanup. Yeah, they've secured yeah, people's yeah. deposit. They're solving funds. problems. They have this... Uh, Planting for food and yeah, jobs, yeah. which has solved all our hunger problems. Yeah. They have, my brother, yeah. <laughs> financial sector cleanup. Yes. We have wasted billions of CDs in this thing. You see, we knew there were challenges in the financial sector. Mm. Our approach was not this excessive one-time shock to the system. Okay. Because you've seen the numbers financial sector growth has dropped mm. significantly. Mm. You've let people's businesses down. You have well over 100 and something businesses that have gone down. Jobs have gone. Mm. Hundreds of thousands. Because apart from those who are employed directly, yeah. you have those There's who are... There's a ripple effect. There's a ripple effect. Currently, we are facing it. Mm. People have their, mo their monies locked up, yeah. including in investment firms. Was that the right approach? No. Now you want an additional $15 billion. Yeah. To go and do what? People are crying for their monies. Mm. Where's the money? You said you were securing the money. Mm. Where's the money? The people that you said are responsible for this mess, they are working free. Yeah, that's something I have, so, a, I have some beef with. Yeah, so, I so I, 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 I don't... Charlie, they should, they should really listen to the ground. I'm not done with them yet. Financial sector. They have plenty <laughs> for food and jobs. <laughs> fantastic program because one of the sectors that can truly transform this country mm. is the agri sector. Okay. Subsidized inputs, subsidized seats, great. However, mm. when you're introducing a program like that at that scale, mm. common sense should tell you that mm. you are going to have a lot of products produced mm. out. Yes. You need storage for it. Mm -hmm. You need to have a distribution system for it. Mm -hmm. You need to have markets for it. Yeah. Processing. Yeah. You were short on all these. But you say we should praise you because there's plenty for food and jobs. Plenty for food and jobs was supposed to be like, okay, you feed yourself. Yeah. That was where it ends. You feed yourself. Mm. After you feed yourself, the rest and form of And that's the outcome. People borrowed monies. Mm. Go to rural communities and find out. People borrowed monies so they can participate in planting for food and jobs. Now, the products are settled on their farms. You can't harvest. Mm. When you harvest, who is coming to buy? Yeah. So the zeal, the enthusiasm that people went into this program with is diminishing. Is the planting for food and jobs in danger of collapse? Well, the way they went about it, let's just say it's on wobbly sticks. Really? It's on wobbly sticks. That but my, 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 my biggest fear for this thing is that, you see, we need to produce more as a country to feed ourselves. Mm. The huge importation bill does not help us. So if this is what we've all agreed and answered that we want to do, we have to make sure that it works. 
policy planners, especially government, mm. considering the number of people you yourself came into power with, that they are going to help you to deliver. Mm. And with all that numbers, this is the deliverables. What kind of quality of people do you even come, come up with? I mean, the whole thing with this NPP government is a whole myriad of... It's a lot. It's a okay. lot. Okay, so let, let's go back to the Afrobiometer report. The Afrobiometer report indicates that 34% of Ghanaians said that they will vote for the incumbent government, whilst 22% said they will vote for the major opposition party. Now, my question to you is, how do you turn those numbers? Forget the fact that there's apathy and disinterest simply because there's disappointment. I mean, you can clearly see there's disappointment. There's disappointment. Uh -huh. but, but now, politically, how do you flip those numbers as, in, as an NDC? Well, we in the NDC, we have maintained that 22%. The last Afro parameter they did, I think that we're still in the same 22% okay. margin. Okay. So nothing has really changed for the NDC. Okay. Also because we're in opposition. Mm. We haven't really offered anything yet. Our manifesto has been worked on. But the NPP mm. to their 34% actually dropped from 40-something percent. 49. 49%. Yeah. And as I said, that alone is a vote of no confidence mm. in, your, in, your, in your administration. How are you going to turn the tides within one year? Teachers want their monies paid. You promised them. We'll discuss that one, won't we? Yeah. Good. I'm waiting for it. <laughs> <laughs> then uh, you have contractors who you say you've paid, which mm. apparently you've paid some, mm. those whose monies were small, those whose monies were big, have still not been paid. And it's still the same. If you are not uh, with us, you mm. wait. Really? Yes. If you are not a NDC, NPP and you can't work your way there, you wait. What kind of country is that? You have a, a what's it called? Debt mm. still on your books that you are still blaming NP, N, NDC for. It's when it comes to discussion of NPP, I'm always lost for words how to describe them because if I really say I'm going to talk about NPP, it means I have to go within myself and bring a different version of me out. And I don't really want to bring that. Bring that. But moving forward for the NDC, because I'm here for the NDC, mm. we are happy with the numbers. Because we told the people of Ghana that we, we can't come and promise you heaven. Because it's a work in progress. Mm -hmm. But we believe that with the right foundations, we can move this country forward. We invested in health, we invested in education. Those are still our major um, Trump health, health points. Health and education. Health and education going forward. Because mm. we still have a problem with beds in this yeah. country. We still have beds in this country. We also want to look at um, transport. Actually, we started it's an interesting comment you made there. We have a problem with beds, but do we really have a problem with beds? Because there's a whole number of hospitals that are sitting um, uncompleted. uncompleted and in different stages of completion. And those are all potential beds. So do we really have a problem with beds in that sense? But, if, but until you complete the project and have the... Now some have been completed and, and they are not operationalized. Yeah, until so you have it operationalized, you don't have beds. Okay. So I think most of these projects were initiated by the NDC. Mm. We, will, we want to finish those projects and get those beds out. Mm. We want to build a lot more on the transport sector as well. Now, in the last administration, because we focused, our focus on agri was on the value chains, mm. we also want to continue with that. Value chains in share butter, because it has a huge potential. The use of share butter in the cosmetic industry is big. Um, for cashew, we already have uh, done a lot in cocoa. Yeah. There are also challenges with the cocoa sector. We want to look at distribution, warehousing, and markets. We started with some markets across the country, very beautiful markets. So we want to roll out more. For the new um, Is that the, the one is under the Gump project? There's those markets under the, 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 city, the city markets where they are being refurbished. Yeah. Okay, the whole market, I think yeah. it's Tamale, Kumase, Kumase, I think it was New Tafo. New Tafo. Um, and then Takwadi, there were some other projects. Yes. Okay. And especially for the new regions, because with the new regions, you have to design new 
administrative systems that will roll out um, social amenities mm. and all that. So we have a lot more focus on the new regions mm. also. And to roll out what we are known for. We don't make promises and come and give you slogans and rhymes and hooks to memorize and then in the end we disappoint you. We work according to what we have and what we have we show you what we can do. Okay, well, um, so you're hoping that next year the 22% is going to change? When you it start, will change. Then you start talking about your... It your, will change. Your, 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 your 365 your days yeah. to an election. Yeah. And if an incumbent government, yeah. and already the numbers are falling for you. And by it's going the, to take... But you explain the falling. The falling, no, it's going to turn around. Oh, my As laws are coming up, this will also be going up. It's not going up. Okay, all right. We'll take a short break. <laughs> uh, let's take a short break. We'll come back and have, continue the conversation. Don't go anywhere. <laughs> All right, welcome back. We're going to have a conversation, uh, continue our conversation this morning, but we're going to be talking about labor unrest. And there's quite a bit of it happening in the country right now. The great co workers are, um, uh, you know, ranting about their own issues, and then the teachers are also on about their own issues. Let me read a couple of stories, and then I'll engage Gabriela and her thoughts on this. Energy sector debts. Greco staff begin indefinite set down strike on Wednesday. That's today. The staff of the Ghana Great Company, Gridco, have announced that they will go ahead with the sit-down strike they threatened uh, beginning Wednesday, December 11th. The Gridco uh, staff have said they are, sorting, they are resorting to the strike fo uh, following non-response from Gridco management and institutions petitioned. The staff had originally threatened the, to to, on, to strike on December 4th. Um, the sit-down strike is expected to be followed by a picket um, at the Great Co. head office at a later date. Speaking of Eyewitness News, after the announcement, the chairman of the Great Co. staff, Senior Staff Association, Rafael Kono, said the strike could have been avoided if there had been proper dialogue with the staff. I believe that from the 21st, if there had been some engagements, um, I quote, uh, we, would, we wouldn't have gotten to where we are now. We had a demonstration on the, on the 3rd and 4th of December. We were supposed to embark on this sit-down strike, um, but as rational workers and staff who are professionals, we thought that um, even though the issues are already in the media, let's petition the appropriate authorities um, so that we can pick it up from there. But lo and behold, no engagement has been done with the leadership of the staff group on the petitions that we raised. Now, let me go to the teacher's um, story. Labor Commission orders teacher unions to call off illegal, in quotes, strike. All right. The National Labor Commission, NLC, has said the ongoing strike by the three teacher unions in protest of the non-payment -pay of arrears is illegal. It has therefore ordered the teacher unions to call off uh, their strike immediately and return to work. This instruction comes on the back of a scheduled meeting between representatives of the uh, Ghana Education Service, GES, Ministry of Education, Fair Wages and Salaries Commission, of which the teacher unions were supposed to be a part but failed to attend the three teacher unions, that is the um, Ghana National Association of Teachers, NAT, the National Association of Graduate Teachers, NAGRAT, and the Coalition of Concerned Teachers, CCT, are currently embarking on a strike over demands of payment of salary arrears. All right. Gabriela, your thoughts? First on grid call. Mm. I think they give quite a few heads up that we're going to go on this strike since about two months ago. Mm -hmm. we, you know, we were aware of the issues at um, Gridco. Yeah. And now they're actually calling our bluff. So government sat, as usual, aloof. Mm. They didn't bother to engage them. Mm. And now the day has come. We're going into Christmas. And uh, if you know where Gridco sits in the power um, stream. Yeah. You have the bulk, the power generators, then you have Gridco, mm. then you have the those who sell power, Netco yeah. and ECG. Yeah. And Gridco is sitting there by itself. Mm. So there's no alternative to Gridco. Mm. 
Yeah. Which means that if Good Coach shuts down, we are in doom. We are messed up. There's no sock. <laughs> <laughs> it is doom. <laughs> so I'm surprised that the government did not pay any attention to what the they're trying to put across and has remained insensitive mm. and careless about about the situation. I mean, if this thing goes bad and we actually have to they decide to shut us off, it will be crippling to the economy. Mm. You know, yeah. you don't play with things like that. Mm. You don't play with things like that, which will be serious in this country. When we were leaving, there were debts in the power sector. We created ESLA. Mm. ESLA has given you billions. When you came to office, you even increased the tax on ESLA yeah. to generate more money. Mm. You're not using ESLA for its intended purpose. That is what is causing this. Because if you were to pay off these debts mm. with ESLA, at least it, it will give these um, agencies some um, leverage, yeah. financial liquidity, yeah. to be able to also do their work. Where is the ESLA money going? Good question. Ask, ask MVP government. <laughs> really? There's, I don't bother to find out what to do with the money, to be honest with you. You know, the other issue also is government agencies, when we were in office, what we did was that we knew that there's a problem with government agencies paying their bills because they allow you to sit and then accumulate, mm. then it becomes government's headache. Mm. So our program was that we put all of them on prepaid. Okay. So about 60% of state enterprises had to go prepaid. Mm. And it was an ongoing process, except for some key institutions like the hospitals, where you call them emergency services. Yeah. That we still had them without those. But majority of them were put on prepaid to address this issue of they not paying their bills. Mm. When, you go to the, when you go to ECG and you ask them what's the debt profiling of their customers, majority of them will be government agencies from ministries area all the way to the assemblies. Mm. You know? okay. So government has to be forthcoming with their bills mm. and commitments because the power sector is not, it's a monopolistic sector. It's not something you have so many private players yeah. that we can just jump from this one to this one to that one. It doesn't exist here. Mm. So moving forward, I think that they should take those people seriously. No, I mean, but the them. IPPs are, yeah. are quite a few, but it's the, it's the distributors that we have the only one. The distributors that we have only one. Yeah. The distributors that we have only one. So that's the point I'm making, mm. that if these ones go on strike, mm. we are, I was about to use a word that I shouldn't use. <laughs> We are doomed. <laughs> I think I know the word you are trying to use. Yeah, but, uh, yeah. we are doomed. Um, so, Energy Sector Levy Act, mm -hmm. the ESLA. Is it legal to use the money for anything else apart from energy sector things? You know, if I tell you that I've educated myself comprehensively on ESLA, I'll be lying to you. Okay. So, I don't want to engage in the conversation that is going to be from my imagination and generalized. Okay. I prefer okay. to speak to issues okay. that I know that I've appraised myself yeah. on. But what I do know is that we did set up a Slack house so those meetings when those things were, those conversations were going on mm. and those recommendations were made. We did set up ESLA to address the issues of debts that were accumulating in the energy sector, which mm. were crippling the economy and government finances. Mm. And uh, these monies were supposed to deal with these agencies. Yeah. All right. So if these are what the monies are used, supposed to be used for, mm. then let's show commitment and let those monies be used for what it is that they're supposed to be used for mm. and not diverted to other areas. Because if you don't solve those problems or fix those problems as they were set out to, you create more problems. Mm. Governing a country is not the same as governing your two by four business. Things keep compounding yeah. at a rapid rate, and the scale at which it goes is expensive. So you don't take these things lightly. Mm. Let's talk about the teachers, because mm -hmm. I know you have major issues there. What are your, what, what, what's, um, the, the, the NLC says their strike is illegal. You know, on the issue of the teachers, this is the first time that you've had all three unions Agreeing at the same time, at yeah. the same time coming yeah. together to fight yeah. for something. Yeah. If you look at 
what is happening right now, according to the Ministry of Education, the problem really is about so another supposed legacy debt. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. According to this ministry, they've paid roughly about almost 90% of this supposed debt. Mm. And it's just left with some 10%. So how come 350,000 plus teachers have all decided to go and sit at home if it's just about the 10%? Interesting. Okay. Going into an election year, strikes are going to be very, very common because everybody wants to put across a certain message mm. to the political leadership going into an election. It's a welfare matters. Mm. I'll take you back to what they are calling legacy debt and how we had to come by this. In 2012-2013, uh, you know that the economy came under a lot of pressure yeah. because of um, slow growth in China. We all know what Majority, no. So I don't, I don't educate anybody on why we had the challenges that we had. But we had um, shocks to our currency. We had a power crisis on our hands. So government finances were not the best. Now, in 2013, we discovered that the problem we had was that about 70 to 72 percent mm. of domestic revenue was going into payment of the wage bill, okay. which is huge. Mm. You had about another 15, 20 percent going into statutory funds. So by the time you deal with payroll and statutory funds, mm. there's very little room for you to do to anything. Spend anything else, yeah. So goods and services was affected. Mm. That's why we had to go and borrow excessively to be able to undertake projects. Okay. In the audits for this payroll, trying to streamline uh, the whole payroll system, it came to bear that there were issues of ghost workers. So I think it was contra uh, contracted to KPMG to do mm. an audit of our payroll system. Mm. And one of the recommendations was that we have to do revalidation of the public sector. Okay. And this affected not just education, health, normal central government operations, mm across board. Mm. In the education sector, we had what was described as a lot of ghost names. But when we did the actual validation, we found out that there were actually human beings, there were some names <laughs> that were non-existent, but there were also names that came with human beings mm. that were working. Yeah. Now, in the normal scheme of things, if government is going to employ in the education sector, it goes through GES. GES puts it out that we're employing so many teachers. Yes. The government slash, slash Ministry of Finance makes provision in the budget that this number of people are coming on board at these various grades, and yeah. there's a budget for it. Yeah. It's planned for. Mm. When you have a system, that's how it works. I know you, I have a child who's of age, you work in the sector, then I come and see you. Oh, Charlie, Chrissy needs a job. Oh, come, come and sit down. It will take you. <laughs> oh, God, Ghana. <laughs> it's serious. Oh. Yeah. So you have people that are there mm. teaching, but the system doesn't recognize them. Yeah. And some of them have been sitting there for years. So had we not done an audit, it probably would have been worse for them. Because until there's vacancy mm. for your name to actually get into the system, yeah. you'll still be hanging on. Okay, so help me to understand something. Is there a general disrespect for the way government works in, this, in terms of the civil service? I think there are too many inefficiencies. Okay. And it's good that we put in technology to try and solve these problems. But technology in itself yeah. does not solve the problem 100%. Okay. There's always that human element that has to make sure that you do things right mm. and you are honest mm. in your dealings. Mm. So now back to um, this teacher and our so-called legacy debt. <laughs> so when we found out that we have this quantum of people that have been working, yeah. you also can't let them go. Mm. So the government then met with the labor union heads and the arrangement was that we cannot pay you mm. for the time that you came to date. Because, one, 
you were unplanned okay. in the budget. <laughs> okay. But if you agree, mm. we'll engage you, mm. okay. formalize you, but we can only pay you three months because of the numbers. Mm. And also because we're having challenges. Man, you also had a fund program that had an embargo on employment. But it did allow that when people go on retirement or training, that we could have special um, recruitment to fill those vacancies. Mm. But we can't pay you full. Mm. So in the negotiations, they agreed yeah, okay. to the three, the three, three months. months. Yeah. Then the government and the political platform says, don't worry, mm. we'll pay you all the arrears mm. when we come. <laughs> so then you, you came. Yeah. Now pay them. You've made promises. You've made promises. Okay. Pay them. Mm. Our conditions are different. This is what we could do. This is what you say you can do. Mm. According to them, they paid about 90%. But the, the, that's the 10%. Which and, is the, and this and, 10% and, and, is and actually... You, and you doubt it. You know, this 10%, when you translate uh, the labor force in the energy and the education sector, 10% yeah. is not 1,000 and 2,000. 10% is almost like 40,000. Between 35 to 40,000 mm. people. You know, and they, these people also know that when you're engaging government, and government said they'll do something. If mm. you don't sit on them to do it, yeah. they'll not do it. They'll go into another election year. Your 35,000 of you who are left yeah. will not get your money. So they're in solidarity then nobody is going to work. We we'll all stay. But it comes down to workers' welfare. Okay. Because see, right now, things are difficult for people. Yeah. Cost of living is high. Employment is an issue. Mm. So in a household where so many people are unemployed, there's a lot of pressure on people mm. to take, take care of yeah. those households. Yeah. So there's pressure on everybody. If I know that you owe me, why won't I come for my money? Mm. All right. Okay. Well, um, it's time for us to... To, to, to wrap up now. Thank you very much to you, Gabriela. Um, Gabriela Tete is a member of the National Communication Team of the NDC. Hi there. We hope you enjoyed the show. Make sure to subscribe, like, comment, and share with your friends. This is Breakfast Daily on City TV. Join the Breakfast Daily team Monday through Fridays from 7.30 a.m. to 10. Join us for breakfast daily only on City TV.